Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to be presenting a new project that I've been working on. It's called the Autodash project. It's going to be a demo of a car and infotainment system. So to introduce the project, uh, Autodash is an open source in, in car infotainment system that provides a com combined platform for information, delivery, and entertainment. It's based on open source technologies. It's based on top of Plasma, Kiragami, and it is powered by Microsoft AI's voice assistant. So before I get to the goals, uh, I would like to say that uh, so a lot of companies, a lot of car manufacturers today are coming out with cars with smart infotainment systems. Those smart infotainment systems are generally closed down, uh, don't have, aren't modular, and most of the data that they say that they have smart assistance, that data is probably going to a Google server or it's going to an Amazon Alexa. So there's hardly any privacy in those smart entertainment systems. So the need, so that there is a need for happening, or having an open source infotainment system in cars. The goal of this project is to be extendable, to be modular, and have a privacy-friendly voice assistant experience. So when I talk about being extendable and being modular, let me just explain the architecture of this project. So what you see on the screen is uh, that it's, it's modular in the sense uh, the QML user interface for the dashboard is based off uh, separate models. One is a dashboard model, a navigation model, and a music model. They have their own sub-modules, that's external dash and internal dashboard, a explore nearby module, a directions module, a radio module, and a music mod player. These are sub-modules. These can be easily activated, deactivated, depending on what your car, as a manufacturer, you would like to have in your car infotainment system. On the other architecture side, this is powered by Microsoft's voice user interface. The entire UI is, uh, is provided data by the Autodash Microsoft skill. So this skill is also divided into sections based on the, mod on the modules of the UI. It's segregated into dashboard, navigation, and music. Each module controls its specific, uh, each, each, each separation in the skill controls its specific module on the UI. So now coming to the main thing is the dashboard. So the dashboard has two views, uh, two submodules, call them. The first one is the external submodule, the external dashboard. So what it has is basically it has all the controls, the physical controls or external controls of a car that would, that would be on the dashboard, like your car doors, controlling car doors, your headlight system, your wiper blade system. And it also gives you information about your speed and fuel levels. The other um, module is the internal dashboard module. The internal dashboard module provides internal car features, the stuff that's inside a car, basically things like door locking, uh, seat adjustment, and climate control. So here's a small demo of Mycroft with the dashboard. Hey, Mycroft, lock the left door. Yeah. Hey, Microsoft. Saturday's forecast is 26 for a high and 25 for a low. Sunday's forecast is 26 for a high and 25 for a low. On Monday, expect moderate rain with a high of 28 and a low of 28. Hey, Mycroft, lock the left door. The left door has been locked. 
Hey Mycroft, unlock the trunk. The trunk has been unlocked. Hey Mycroft, unlock the hood. The hood has been unlocked. Hey Mycroft, turn on the headlights. The headlights have been turned on. So now we'll be seeing the internal dashboard demo. Hey Mycroft, increase the left seat pitch. Hey Mycroft, decrease the right seat pitch. Right seat pitch has been decreased. Hey Mycroft, increase the air conditioning. The air temp has increased. Hey Mycroft, increase the steer height. Steering wheel height adjusted. So that was the dashboard demo of how Mycroft could control the whole dashboard infotainment system. So uh, the second module is the navigations module. This module is basically what generally normal cars would have with GPS system previously. Nowadays, the new cars have it built into their smart infotainment systems. So navigation is also a similar module that provides mapping, provides current location. It also provides direction and exploration of nearby places. Some of the features of this uh, navigation system that has been built into this infotainment system currently has, it allows you to explore places of interest nearby. Could be restaurants, could be bars, could be parks, could be anything. Uh, location auto completion, so once you, if you have an on-screen keyboard and you start typing in the search bar an address, it should auto, you should be able to auto complete the address. Uh, it also gives you turn by turn directions and supports different map styles like night, terrain, etc. So this is a demo of Microsoft hey, Microsoft navigation. Locate restaurants near me. Found the following places. Hey Mycroft, navigate to Arthur Road, Mumbai. Showing marker for Arthur Road, Mumbai. Yeah, you can hit the direction button to see the directions. So this is the map style, this is the additional features I was talking about. You can change the map to whichever mode you want, night mode, if you want it dark. And this will be the autocomplete feature. So once you start typing, it should start showing different kind of addresses that things you're typing. So I typed the address of this university. And I also tried getting directions, so about in 350 or 340 odd directions, I can actually drive down from India to this university somehow. So moving on to the next uh, module is the entertainment module. The entertainment module basically has two things. One is the radio player, and one is the music player. Now the radio player and music player uh, have complete voice control integration with Mycroft. Additionally, uh, because Mycroft can tap into online services, so it was easy to have on add online services like the SoundCloud API to get music from SoundCloud into your car. And support it also supports local media. Another thing was that when you're using an entertainment dashboard, you don't want to have the music screen all the time on. So so you would want to have your dashboard screen on. You can still have your music player playing in a mini view on the dashboard. So here's a demo of the music module. First, the radio player. Hey, Mycroft, turn on the radio. Hey, Mycroft, tune to fix it news. Hey, Mycroft, turn off the radio. Okay. 
Now the music player. Hey Mycroft, search SoundCloud for gorillas. Hey Mycroft, play the song Clint Eastwood. Hey Mycroft, show dashboard. So this is the mini view of the music player and radio system. Hey Mycroft, pause the current song. Yeah, that was the demo of the music module. Uh, moving on the roadmap ahead of the smart entertainment system, open source infotainment system would be, is to connect it up with actual middleware such as the smart car API that provides a control layer between the hardware and software for multiple car brands. Currently it supports around 14 car brands, so there will be integration for that because it's a free API. And there'll be a roadmap ahead of ad additional controls and sensor notification support for things like seat belt detection for that new test and hardware. And m move this project to KDE Playground. It currently is in the Scratch repository, but the plans to move it to KDE Playground. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Thank you, Aditya. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was curious about uh, the license of this project, if it is open source, and if you have a link about it. Uh, yeah, it is open source. I, I can give you the link on IRC. It's completely open source. It is actually it's in the Scratch repository currently, in my KD Scratch repository. And uh, the license is GPL. OK. May I ma email you to ask it if I need it? Yeah. The, if I need the link of the project? Yeah, I, I can share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Um, OK. Uh, just a, uh, a question. Uh, on which hardware uh, does it work? Does it work, for example, on a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, so so currently uh, I've tested this on the Pine at 64 board, and I think it's going to be more targeted to any single board computer that people can probably attach a screen to and run it themselves in their car. Okay. And um, uh, uh, are the functionalities of, uh, I don't know, uh, turning up and down uh, um, the, the windows um, uh, working? Yeah, Do they I, work uh, with the OBD protocol? So from what I understand, that's where I'm, the, there's really no, uh, right now it's currently what you're seeing is only the UI interface and the voice okay. interface. Uh, the integration with the hardware side, that's what I was depending on the smart API, smart car API for that has, this abstraction layer between hardware and the UI. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, ha have you been talking with any car manufacturers as well, or just the smart car APIs? This is just a new project. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sure they'd be interested. Yeah. Okay. Back there. Yeah, yes, so since I was closer, sorry. Uh, the, does Microsoft support this kind of conversational interface? Or like you could, you had these examples that, uh, for example, uh, uh, tilt the seat, but can you say that after like, tilt more or like, like continue on the same, or is it always like a new command in the in no, uh, system that so, you build? No, so, so there is a conversational interface. It's just, uh, it's just, one of the things on the roadmap that I have to do is combine things like multiple actions and have a context. <laughs> Microsoft does keep that in the background. Uh, question here. Um, 
are you planning to focus on the UI and micros, micro integration only? You are going to go for the HMI to in, embed the logic uh, of a car into the UI? You are planning also, uh, what is your strategy towards the distribution that you want to put this place, this on? Because uh, depending on your thoughts about it, then the project is small or, or big or huge, I'm just trying to... So, so currently, uh, since it's a single developer project, I'm, I'm just currently working on this and I'm working on other projects of Minecraft as well. So for me right now, the main, in, uh, main idea was to do the UI and the voice UI. Uh, before uh, moving on to the hardware side of it. On the hardware side, I'm looking at currently at APIs that already exist that I can tie into for the hardware rather than writing hardware stuff. So your, f your main focus is then the integration between Minecraft and the UI, if, yes. I, uh, if I understand correctly. Yes, the UI and Minecraft. OK. Yeah. Any more questions, anyone? OK, thank you, Aditya. Yeah. Thank you.